I know, it's been a while. Things have been difficult and hectic around here. But I'm here for another installment of my life, according to Dr. Kayak. Sometimes by sharing my thoughts on Facebook or YouTube, I've had hopes of changing the world. (laughs) My former next-door neighbor did his best to convince me that I was stupid for not sharing the same political opinion he had. It's no secret who many people support politically these days. Over the last few weeks, I've been making 600-mile round trips from northern to southern Michigan, and every trip, more and more political signs appear supporting this candidate or that candidate. The commercials on radio and television are getting nastier and nastier, along with the attitudes of our families and friends and neighbors and strangers. No matter how or what you believe, your savior is your savior alone, be it some politician or God. Frankly, I've yet to discover anyone who doesn't like cheesecake. I believe in cheesecake. I know that cheesecake is probably not the healthiest food, and if you consume too much of it, there's a possibility it could be very bad for you. But for some reason, no one has ever told me that I was stupid for eating cheesecake. However, many nasty people cannot simply support their own choice of politician without spreading their hate and disdain for those who do not agree with them. What kind of moron would vote for this person? That other candidate belongs in jail. Look, I care. Not about your God, or who you vote for, or if you like cheesecake. I care about people being kind and supportive and respectful. The people in my life are my family, my friends, my neighbors, and anyone else I come in contact with on a daily basis. For the life of me, I'll never understand how we can be so caustic over things we have the freedom and the right to support. I think we let the term free speech go to our heads a little too much. Some things we should simply not say or do out of respect for others. I do admit I still have a problem keeping my mouth in check sometimes, but nonetheless, I guess I know I cannot change the world by posting my thoughts on YouTube or Facebook. So let me get off that soapbox and get onto another one. I sold my home. It took a while, longer than I thought, yet still moving day came so much quicker than I thought it would. For the last couple of months, I've been selling off stuff, giving stuff away, boxing up, packing up making a few trips to my new location very gradually. It's less intense than doing it all with one huge moving truck. Watching my home slowly empty while still living in it puts me in a bit of a funk. I love my home and leaving it, as well as this area, leaves me in a sappy state of emotions. But it's all part of the plan. For a while now, I've been manifesting my future. Four or five years ago, I was uncertain what my future would look like. In fact, I had no idea. Well before COVID, I made mention that I could feel something serious was going to happen in my life, something drastic. This wasn't all there was for me. Living and dying in a mobile home park was not my destiny, but I had no idea what it was. During the beginning of the COVID area, I thought it was my interest in camping that might be this big change. It was great for a few summers. Still, camping left me feeling like something was missing. And then I got the crazy notion to spend way too much money on a fishing kayak rig. The problem with kayaking in northern Michigan is the summers are just too short. The end of my job as a property manager of 10 years was rapidly approaching, as was my age of retirement. Now, when I say retirement, I mean the age where I can begin to collect Social Security. Frankly, I retired out of high school. My goal was, and always has been, to try to enjoy my life to the best of my ability without conforming to society's norms. 30 years and out was never my plan. With the short summers and long winters here in northern Michigan, I decided I needed to try and distance myself from the cold here. Although I didn't really retire out of high school, I never accepted the idea of working for one employer until I was in my 60s. 
You know, once I tried to count how many jobs I've had over my lifetime, <laughs> there were just too many to remember. The bottom line here is, if you need to make money, there's always a job out there to be had. I never let it keep me from going or doing what I wanted to do in my life. The only limitations were having children and trying to be that idea of the typical American family. Sorry to say it, but looking back, those were the worst years of my life. All that's left is the rest of my life. And it's the only life I have. It started with a romantic notion of becoming a nomad. Leave the bitter winters behind. That was on the forefront of my mind. How can I do it? If you want to do anything, just YouTube it. It's that easy, right? Sure it is. There are a few channels out there that I began to follow. Zoffinger's is a great channel. Marty Zoffinger lived on his boat. He sold his home, bought a boat, and lived on it. He even opened a kayak shop in Florida. And he vowed to do what is called the Great Loop. It's a system of rivers around Florida. And he was going to do it on his big boat. Well, Marty did lots of great kayak modifications. He inspired me to do the same. Now he's still living in Florida. He set up shop in some undisclosed spot. He's still making videos and doing what he loves to do to survive. A man after my own heart. For quite a while, I lived vicariously through Marty, never missing an episode while shivering my ass off in sub-zero weather here in northern Michigan. I was just wishing I was him. Well, hey, why not be me? I can do that. Or something like that. I suppose that was when the crazy notion to become a nomad entered my feeble mind. With my work as a property manager coming to an end, I decided it was now or never. I could stay here, trying to survive in the winters and trying to pay my bills, or I could sell my home, liquidate the bulk of stuff that I've collected over a lifetime, and hit the road. Well, it's not quite that easy, but it's doable. In life, there are always obstacles. Love is a big one. And I've seemed to have found it again. But then again, I love cheesecake too. Okay, so she's not ready to go. I'm not sure if she'll ever be ready. But time won't wait and neither will I. There's still some sand flowing in my hourglass. It's time to shit or get off the pot. Hey, I have all kinds of great euphemisms. But I still have a few obstacles too. My brothers and I lost our father a few years ago. Mom, she's still hanging in there, although she needs a little help, and she's still occupying her condo. Okay, she needs a lot of help, actually, and I'm not sure how long I can be of help before she needs more care than I can provide. So the plan is for me to pile up the remains of my life into her garage and basement and take advantage of rent-free living as I cook and clean and care for her to the best of my ability. Without looking too far into the future because predicting the future has never been a strong point for me. I'll hang with her until I'm ready to hang myself. By then, my nomadic plans will hopefully come together. So, this is where I'm at. In the kitchen of my home that's no longer mine. In five days, I have to be out. Needless to say, I have a lot on my plate right now. Up until this point, I've yet to mention that about a month ago, I had prostate surgery, and I'm still recovering from that. At my age... Just about anything can happen, and I ain't waiting around for the bad stuff. And before I end this, please remember to be kind. Keep your politics and your gods to yourself. Hold the door for someone. Hold the hand of someone. Play nice. Not everyone is as perfect as your dog thinks you are. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. And if you don't mind, you can help me out along my journey through my PayPal link. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.